to the model. According to the hypothesis, the decision prey-predator is based on parallel processing of retinal information in pretectal and tectal neuronal populations and their interactions. What happens when these connections are surgically interrupted? A large moving square activates Th3 and T51 neurons strongly. Due to the defect, both the facilitation in Th4 and the inhibition of T52 fail to occur. Now the prey dummy should elicit prey catching. That happens exactly as predicted. The brain lesion toad responds to anything that moves with prey catching. A large moving square, its shadow. A big disc. A stripe in anti-worm configuration. Even a toy locomotive is pursued by the brain lesion toad. Theoretically, a toad's brain should be able to extend the species' common prey schema individually by learning. It would only be necessary to inhibit Th3 so that the inhibition of T5-2 fails to occur. Normally, toads respond to large moving objects with escape. By hand feeding, a toad can be trained to include the hand in the prey schema. A naive toad hesitates before accepting a mealworm from the experimenter's hand. This feeding method is repeated daily until the toad becomes conditioned to the stimulus situation and snaps at the prey. After a fortnight, even the moving hand alone elicits prey capture. Generalizing, the toad includes also a large moving black square in its prey schema. Even a stripe in anti-worm configuration elicits prey catching. It can be concluded that the species' common prey recognition is modified individually by learning. If in the training phase both the prey and the hand are offered, the toad has a choice according to this circuit. The hand should elicit escape, the worm prey catching. Are there, in the toad's brain, neuronal systems that are sensitized by the combination of prey and predator information? Then, in the learning phase, by inhibiting Th3, the inhibition of T5-2 could be cancelled and thus prey catching be facilitated. In the performance phase, the hand alone should elicit prey capture. Initially, Th3 and T51 are strongly activated, whereas T52 is inhibited. Th4 activates the sensitized neuron, whereby Th3 in turn is inhibited. T52 hence disinhibited and consequently prey catching is released. That leads to a generalization of the prey schema. The large moving square triggers the same processes as the hand. The anti-worm stimulus activates only Th3 strongly. T5-2 is inhibited and Th4 activates the sensitized neuron. As a result, Th3 is inhibited, T5-2 disinhibited and thus prey catching released. In a conditioned toad, 
responding to a large moving object with prey catching, it can be shown after application of carbon-14 labelled 2-deoxyglucose that in the telencephalon there is such a sensitised neuronal structure. In the colour-coded autoradiographic image of a transverse section through the caudal telencephalon of a monocularly trained toad, particularly the ventral medial pallium in the corresponding contralateral brain hemisphere is strongly activated. If this phylogenetical precursor of the hippocampus, in mammals known to play a role in learning, is lesioned in the conditioned toad, then objects are discriminated again according to the species common prey schema. The neuronal network that has emerged during phylogeny dominates. We do not know the evolutionary adaptive processes that underlie its connection patterns. Principally, however, it can be shown that neuron-like connected artificial computing elements through adjustments of their connective parameters, are able to discriminate objects. In this artificial neuronal net, a matrix of 16 input neurons fulfills the function of retinal ganglion cells. They are connected via nine processing interneurons with two output neurons. They shall evaluate quantitatively an image on the retina according to the criteria, prey-like and predator-like, respectively. The net is trained, according to a mathematical algorithm, to discriminate squares and stripes oriented parallel and perpendicular to the direction of movement until the task is mastered. A stripe in worm configuration. The net decides... Prey. There is even a differentiated evaluation. The index maximally reaches the value 1. The same stripe in anti-worm configuration. The net evaluates it with 0.72 predator-like. A large square object. For the net, it is with 0.8 predator-like. The capability of this net even exceeds the training. A horizontal stripe with a small spot above is evaluated with 0.6 more threatening than prey-like. For different directions of movement, the object evaluations are appropriate to the training. Worm configuration. Prey. Anti-worm configuration. Predator-like. Large square. Predator. What happens if a certain interneuron of this net is eliminated? The large square now is evaluated with 0.43 predator-like only, but with 0.89 prey-like. The anti-worm is given a relatively high prey value too. The predator value with 0.31 is somewhat lower than for the square. The worm is regarded as prey also by the lesion net. Its classification as predator with 0.06 reaches the lowest value. In the lesioned net, for all tested stimulus patterns, the evaluation prey dominates, but a differentiation according to their predator character is still present. The feature-detecting property of an artificial neuronal net can be applied technically, such as for sorting objects. This is the model of a rail track system installed at an inclined plane sloping from left to right. The wagons shall be sorted on two tracks with reference to their load, which is oriented in parallel or perpendicularly to the direction of movement. A rectangular track crossing in the viewing field of a video camera serves for the test of movement direction invariance. Before each wagon enters the crossing, it passes a rail contact that releases two video pictures. The difference picture is processed by the artificial neuronal net whose output triggers a rail shunt.
The wagons are now assigned to the appropriate tracks. In a practical task, an artificial neuronal net can trigger robotic movements. If an object is aligned parallel to the direction of a conveyor belt, the robot grasps toward it. Other objects are ignored. In this way, the bridge is made from biology to robotics. The example is practice related and therefore of heuristic interest. It opens, so to speak, the gateway for complex technologies which take advantage of solving problems that nature has managed. In fact, living systems are the proof of solutions which, in adaptation to various constraints, have emerged during evolution.